Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Custom Carving and Epoxy UK. So I had the um, the idea last night as to, we made those amazing chameleon inks that seem to have worked in the last project that we did with UV resin of all things, uh, with the alcohol inks. Uh, so if you're not checking it out, check it out in our previous videos, I'll link it in, in the description. But I thought, how can I make them work properly in epoxy resin? And I started thinking about the sinker and the, specifically how white it is. And we all know that chameleon colours pop better against a dark or even a, ideally a black background. So is there a way that I could make a dark sinker to work with chameleon inks to give us that petri effect with a darker sort of background um, to give us that impact. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Let's get straight into the project. Getting the uh, PPE on, get the respirator on, get those gloves on uh, before you start messing with epoxy or anything like it, because you do not want epoxy vapors going into your lungs. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, these are those chameleon inks that we made um, with purely 99% alcohol and chameleon powders, essentially. Um, in our last video, I'll link it below if you didn't see it. And I started to think, how can I get them to work properly, ideally in the Petri effect, um, with um, two-part resin? Um, it seemed to create an amazing galaxy effect in the last video. Um, with regards to um yeah really 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 a really nice effect with uv resin but how could we do it in two-part epoxy so i started thinking what happens if i use this white c deeper sinker and add some black mica powder to it to darken it and that's what this experiment's going to be but there's a couple of other changes as well that i did which may or may not have affected the results so we'll, we'll see um Thank you very much to the lady that commented that I've got very nice hands as well with the last video. I uh, really appreciate it. I'm just going to spray these molds with some silicone uh, mold release spray. As always, keep those molds shinier for longer and keep them lasting for longer. Now, this is the resin I'm going to be using, which, uh, again, I did as a Timu purchase. I am going to stop buying resin off Timu, I think, because I get very mixed effects. Um, and I'm going to go with a larger brand supplier, I think, for future videos uh, to see if that has an impact on the overall results. But initially, I want to try it. Ripped a glove, as usual, putting it on. I think I need to get some uh, of, of a larger size. Does anybody else have a problem getting gloves on? Because I know I do. I think uh, I should have got a size larger, but there we go. So this is the resin. Um, again, it was a cheap purchase off of Timu. And as I say, some of the resins I've had have been really good. So I'm not going to take you through the whole process, um, but basically just going to pour in around about four ounces, uh, two of A, two of B, and give it a stir. Going to speed up the process as well, so you guys don't have to watch me mixing resin for five minutes. Pouring this resin, um, it felt very thin uh, compared to previous resins that I've used, and it made me think of more of a tabletop res resin than a sort of one to one resin that I've used before. Um, and that probably should have been the first warning sign at this point um, that maybe everything wouldn't turn out quite as planned. But it just, it seemed very thin. Um, and I don't know what you found with different resins from Timu, uh, but I've had quite a mixed experience so far. Some have been brilliant and others not so good. But anyway, four ounces. Going in, two of each, two of the hardener, and two of the resin. And then we're going to stir for roughly five minutes to get rid of all of those streaks and hopefully give us a crystal clear resin. Uh, 
And now that's just about coming to an end. I'm going to pop it in my bubble removal machine to get rid of these final bubbles. If you've not seen them, mine's from Resiners, and I do recommend them uh, for the money. They're cheaper than a pressure pot, and they get rid of the bubbles. They're dead straightforward to use. Put the resin in, push the button for five minutes, and watch the bubbles go. Uh, we've also got a discount code if you want to get yourself one, which is CCUK. Look at those bubbles rise. So now just um, making sure I've got all of my inks ready that I'm going to use. And this is the main part of the experiment, I suppose. Shaking up that sink of white to make sure that there's no pigment uh, left lying around and it's of the right consistency. I've got one of these little uh, droplet bottles with just a ball bearing in there, nothing else. And now um, I'm just going to add some of that sinker white, not too much, not probably probably about halfway. So um, it's around about five mil I'm going to be adding into this little shaker bottle with the ball bearing. That's another thing I love about this art is you feel like a bit of a scientist, you know, <laughs> back in the science lab when you was a kid, experimenting with different things to see what effects you get. And that's something I always loved as a kid. So I've just rinsed out uh, this funnel with the alcohol to make sure there's no contaminations. And this tiny funnel actually comes with the uh, large packs of the uh, CD from Let's Resin. So actually really, really handy for things like this. Now let's pour it in. Hopefully not making a mess everywhere. And yep, I spilled some on my silicone mat. I am a messy artist. I'm just going to wipe away the excess. If you haven't in your shop, make sure you've always got baby wipes handy. They are very useful as well as 99.9% .9 um, isopropanol alcohol as well. As you can see, there's about five mil in there. Happy with that. If it works, we can always make up a bigger bottle. And now just going to add some mica powder again, not too much initially, because um, I think from a scientific point of view, the more mica you add, the heavier it's going to be. So what, what I'm going to have to do as well to sort of counteract this is add some alcohol as well to hopefully balance everything out. At least that was the thinking at this point. So I thought I'd add a couple of drops of the black alcohol ink as well, just to uh, A, add a bit of alcohol. But also I, I felt it'd be good to mix the two and hopefully give us a more consistent colour. And then just added around about six or seven drops of alcohol as well. And I thought that that should balance out the added weight from the mica powder that we've added should be in the operative word. And now that's done. Uh, it's all in the bottle. Just going to give it a good shake. And we get a grey coloured sinker by the looks of things. But it's still darker than the white. Um, and I was just weighing up what to do here because I didn't really want to add a lot more mica because I felt that that would add to the weight of the sinker too much. So I just decided to add another four or five drops of the black 
alcohol ink just to try and get a slightly darker tone uh, if I could. And just shook it up again and was reasonably happy it was darker so the resin's now crystal clear and i'm gonna pour it in the molds and it does look like there's a few tiny bubbles still in there but i wasn't concerned at this point because it was reasonably clear i knew that those bubbles would rise to the top and i could just burn them uh, off the surface with my torch And now for the fun part as well. So um, just so you know, I'm using the Let's Resin 26 Alcohol Ink set. Um, and I'm going to be dropping inks uh, in here, which is actually one of my favorite parts. I'm quite creative when it comes to this, so I'm not going to stop with every color. I'm just going to drop a few in and speed it up so you can see the process. Love these inks, by the way. They're, they're the best ones that I've found so far for the Petri effect. And actually, in hindsight, I wish that for the the experiment side, I would have just left this part and just used the grey sinker and the um, chameleon alcohol inks, which you can see me adding now, to see what sort of effect that would have made. So I'm going to be experimenting again with doing it just that way. But I thought it'd still be a cool mix. So on the left hand side, I'm just adding that white sinker. And then on the right hand side, Time to use our sort of dark gray sinker. So giving it a good shake to make sure everything's mixed up. And initially it seemed to be no different to the standard white sea deeper. So I was really happy with the consistency, happy with how it was spreading. Um, and it seemed like it would work at this point. I was really happy. And again, on the left hand side, the way the inks have settled, it didn't really give me any cause of concern. I was quite happy with it at this point. And everything I thought was going to plan. Let me know if you've got any other ideas on how we might be able to create this darker sinker. Um, because that's what I, I think would be amazing if we could just get a, got a dark sinker to use with uh, chameleon alcohol inks. I think it would give a really good effect. So I'm going to be certainly playing with this a lot more until I crack it. And I will get there eventually. But if you've got any ideas, put it in comments on what we can try. Um, and let's crack it together as a community, you know. And once the white and the grey is on, we're just going to leave it for the standard 20 minutes before we come back. Well, probably 30 minutes, I would say, before I come back and do a stir. Um, I tend to find that an hour's a little bit long for me. And I tend to find anywhere between sort of half an hour to 45 minutes and the resin seems to have thickened up. So I'm just going to take you down for a closer look of um, where we are. So this is the left hand side, standard white with those alcohol inks and the chameleon inks and this is the right hand side so it already looks a shade darker which is great i thought and i thought that's what i was looking for so i'm going to leave it sort of um half an hour i ended up leaving it 45 minutes in the end before i came back for the stir and as you can see um the effects look like they've worked um again there's a few negative spaces in some of the ones on the right hand side but apart from that, it seems to have worked. So just testing the resin now. And what you want to see is a small trail of resin being left behind. Um, so you know it's ready. I decided at this point it was ready for a stir. And I'm doing these in a bit of a faster motion. So about four times speed, just to sort of show you the swirls that I'm putting in. This is my favorite part, because whatever you do here has a major, major impact on the finished piece. And especially when you're working with Petri. And I loved this design here in this heart. How do you swirl yours? 
And at this point, guys, if you're liking the content, please like and subscribe to the channel. We've just gone over 6,300 subscribers. Want to get to 10,000 if we can over the next few weeks and keep growing together. The more we grow, the more of this content that can come your way and the more crazy experiments we can do to try and find new effects in resin. We've also launched a shop now on Etsy. So if there are any pieces you like, they should be listed within the next four weeks. Um, and in addition to that, if you want to support the channel by buying me a coffee, I've now added a buy me a coffee link, which I didn't know existed until uh, one of the subscribers said, could they buy me a coffee? So all of that is in description. If you want to support the channel, any support is really appreciated. And each and every one of you subscribers is appreciated. I'm loving seeing more comments on the videos and being able to respond and build this together as a community. I appreciate every other artist in the space as well. I know I've had a few people ask me if I've seen Daniel Cooper's content and a few others. Yes, I have. And I think the more of us that are in this space, the more of us that are creating, the more of us that are experimenting, the better. I want to work with any other artists that want to work with me and let's grow this space to be as big as it can. So just put in the same swirls in on the uh, right hand side now as well. Trying to get through any negative space as well, because I didn't want too much. And if you've got any questions as well, guys, don't be afraid to ask. I'll try and respond to every comment, although I am working full time at the moment, as well as doing the content for these videos. And you would not believe how long these take to edit. A standard half hour video probably takes me three to four hours worth of editing. So... Um, I'm going to keep trying to push as much content out as possible, but bear with me as the camera work improves. Hopefully you'll find that there's already an improvement from the earlier videos um, at the moment. And the last couple now. And then all we're going to do is leave them for 24 hours. Um, and the excitement of uh, demolding them will be tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, let's leave these. Um, and we've got some really good patterns. So I'm hoping for some good effects tomorrow. So at this point, I'll be honest with you guys. I wasn't even going to post this video uh, because the results that I had weren't really what I was looking for uh, when I did the demold. Um, but I think it's important that you guys realize that not every project is going to go the right way. Not every experiment goes the right way. But the key is learning from those mistakes so that you can do better, hopefully, next time. And I've had some really, really nice comments in the Facebook group saying that they still thought these pendants were lovely and they would love to get them in a piece of jewellery. So let me know what you think in comments. But let's go straight into the demold. It reminds me of Noel Edmonds' house party, those of you that remember it from back in the day in the UK, and Mr. Blobby, we used to call him. So here's a quick picture, and let's get straight into the demold. Right, well, we are back. It's been 24 hours, and it is time for the demold. Um... And yeah, I'm excited. Let's see what happens. Let's see if this dark sinker has worked or not. Um, and let's see what effects we got. Now these ones, and again, I've been thinking about this overnight whilst these were um, <laughs> um, basically uh, curing. And actually what I should have done is done a few of these without the alcohol inks and just with the chameleon ink. So I think there's gonna be a few more experiments with this as we go on, um, but I'm really curious to see what effects we've got. This one I absolutely love the back on, so I might leave this one to last. So this is the side that we use the normal white sinker, the normal alcohol ink, so it should have worked the same as usual. So let's have a look at these two smaller ones. And I'm, I'm going to do a quick video tomorrow uh, on why I'm doing these smaller ones. But if you look, I think there's been a bit more sinking than I normally get, which is a bit worrying really because I didn't use any silicone oil in these um the only thing that was different 
was the the resin I used, um, which I got from Timu. So maybe it was a thinner consistency resin, but not too keen on those, if I'm being completely honest. So let's hope uh, the rest aren't like it. Uh, let's go with these circles next, because the domes normally give us a good effect. Oh, and again. We seem to have had more sinkage. Um, and I'm not that keen on these, if I'm being honest. I think it's a bit of a flop. Um, I like the glitter, but it all seems to have settled, um, which it didn't do last time we did this. If you look in the how we made chameleon alcohol inks, it didn't do that. Um, that one's OK, but again, it's coming up at the side. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Um, where did we go wrong? Uh, and this time the chameleon ink seems to have sank to the bottom, um, which it didn't do last time. Now, I did add a touch of chameleon ink um, powder to the alcohol inks because it had been a while since I used them. Um, and again, it's the same with that one. We've got the nice Petri effect in the background. But the chameleon powder this time seems to have settled at the top. Um, and the ink seems to have come up around the side, which really doesn't make sense to me. Um, and it's such a shame because I think we would have had some really, really nice pieces. Um, and this is just the ones with the standard white sinker. Um, so I don't know where it's gone wrong, to be honest. Um, that one I still like, actually. <laughs> and it's almost like a little white tadpole there. Um, but it wasn't the effect that we were going for. Um, and this is just the white ones. This isn't even playing around with the, uh, the darker sinker. So I'm not hopeful, um, but we'll see. Let's hope we get one or two nice pieces. And it just goes to show when you work with resin, not everything goes the way you want it. I mean, there's some nice pieces, but they would have been a lot better had the effect worked the way that we wanted it to. So, and again, that would have been stunning had the um, glitter or the chameleon ink that we made not sank and stayed on the dome. So a little bit disappointing if I'm being honest so far. And again, the same with that one. That one would have been absolutely stunning. And now I think, I don't know, I don't think these are good enough to use in jewellery. I think these are going to be in the back of sort of bigger moulds just to use them up. What do you guys think? Would you uh, purchase these? Now, some of them, I really like the back on them. It's like that. That is so colourful. So maybe I can do a dome on that and recover one or two pieces. Um, but yeah, the I don't know why it hasn't worked, if I'm being honest. I think... The, the resin that I trialled was of a thinner consistency to the one that I normally use. And therefore, the chameleon inks that we made just sank straight through. Um, but yeah, it's not filling me with, with much hope at the minute for the, um, the darker one that we did. And I think it's mainly because I changed the resin. And again, look at how stunning that one would have been. Um, but yeah, all in all... Pretty disappointing as an unmold. Um, I don't even know if I'm going to put this out, to be honest. Um, and again, that one would have been absolutely stunning. Um, but it's just that chameleon ink this time has sank through. And again, we seem to get almost a bit of blobbing at the sides, which, again, I can't put a reason as to why. I've done this probably dozens of times now with different ones and it's never had that I mean look at that on the back that is absolutely stunning and and then we've just got almost a blobby mess um yeah not happy with these at all so again I suppose it's a lesson to be learned not everything goes the way you want it to when you work with resin and as well as the successes you will have failures you know it's and I think out of all of these, I don't think there's a piece that I would buy um, the way they are. 
And again, some of them would have been amazing pieces because you can see through to the back. You can actually see the, the Petri's worked in the back, but it's just like a blobby mess. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with these. So if you guys want to put some ideas in comments, let me know. And again, it's such a shame that one's almost like a geode in there. Um, but I don't like on these. It's not like the silicone ones where it was deliberate and it looked great. On these ones, I, it wasn't meant to happen. And I think it actually takes away from the, um, the overall effect, you know. So a little bit disappointed at this point. I don't think any of them are good enough for me to put in jewellery um, and sell, to be honest. Um, that one, again, gorgeous on that side. I might try and recover that by doming it, but again, it's just turned into a blobby mess. So, yeah, that's the normal ones are a failure. <laughs> Let's see what happened with um, the, the darker sinker that we made. But I'm not expecting great results just based on the white ones, which should have worked the same as normal. Again, nothing special there. I actually don't like them. So... But I think it's important that everybody sees this, you know. Um, experiments don't always go the way you want. And this one's, again, if I can peek through that window, I really think it would have worked. I think it's just the new resin that I trialed. Um, not the effect i wanted um so a little bit disappointing we're gonna unmold them all anyway and see if there's one or two pieces that are recoverable but again look the domes are usually my favorite and we just have genuinely a blobby mess now it's not the end of this experiment Will I try again? Of course. <laughs> and we will get it right. But I'm not going to be using that resin again for pendants. Because that's the biggest thing I can put it down to. Is it seem like a thinner consistency than my usual resin that I use. Um, and that's why we have this blobbing where even the chameleon inks have sank through. Which is bizarre. But yeah, I don't think there's one of these for me that is recoverable. Um, I, mean, I suppose that one's quite a nice effect, but again, it's it's not something that I would put my name to and put into a piece of jewellery, you know? Um, you've got to have standards. Um, they, for me, none of these at the minute are up to that quality. They're genuinely just blobby messes. Um, <laughs> so, sorry guys, a disappointing experiment this time, um, but it just goes to show they don't all work out. Um, and I'm gonna be doing more. Some will work, I'm sure, some won't. Um, but yeah, let me know in comments about your biggest failure. <laughs> um, it's just so disappointing to have invested two or three hours into a project and then this is the result, you know? It's 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 very deflating, you know? You, you, you're wasting the resin. Although, in this case, I think the resin was the problem because last time with these chameleon inks that we used, they didn't sink um, and they stayed on the back. Um, and added to that sort of Petri effect. But these, yeah, it's a no from me. So yeah, just goes to show, not every experiment works. As you can see, um, we, um, I'll take you down for a close-up of these, but 
None of these I think are salvageable um, to actually put into a piece. So we've wasted best part of four ounces of, of, of resin um, and not really got a lot to show for it. You know, it's um, none of these are of a usual standard. So this experiment has been a failure. The next one hopefully won't be. Stay tuned because I'm going to keep working on this. I think there is a way to get a dark sinker, um, which will have a better effect with those chameleon inks that we've made. Um, but this time we've, we've had a failure. But, you know, successes only come from making failures and we only learn from making mistakes. And in this one, I think there's been a few, if I'm being honest. Um, I think the biggest one being that I used a different resin, um, which wasn't the same thickness as my usual resin and therefore I should have perhaps waited a little bit longer before adding uh, the inks and the sinker but um, yeah it's been a failure so I hope you've enjoyed the video anyway um, if you have please like and subscribe to the channel um, you know and we will get on with the next experiment now